You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, sent a congratulatory cable to the Chief Executive Officer of the Nas National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, Dr. Maryam Abdel Jalal, on being granted the Nelson Mandela Award for Health Promotion by the World Health Organization. Her Royal Highness expressed her sincere congratulations and blessings on this high-level international honor, which comes to confirm the excellence of Dr. Maryam's endeavors and her contributions to the improvement of health services in the Kingdom of Bahrain, praising her efforts throughout a practical process full of fruitful giving while she sets her sights on serving the country and its honorable people in fulfillment of the aspirations of its wise leadership. The President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, has affirmed Bahrain's keenness to provide the best health services to all citizens and residents, as well as to constantly improve the quality of those services to ensure their sustainability. The SEH President made the statements while paying an inspection visit to the Hamad Town Health Center as part of a series of field visits to primary health care centers to follow up on the progress of the autonomy project. He said that this would serve the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and contribute to implementing the plans put forward by the government led by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to develop the health sector. During the visit, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah praised the progress of the implementation of the National Social Health Insurance Program, Sahati, aiming to achieve comprehensive health coverage as well as enhance the quality and competitiveness and providing health services to meet the aspirations of the beneficiaries. He asserted that the autonomy project under which the Choose Your Doctor program falls supports the continuity of all kinds of health services provided and ensures the delivery of high-quality and competitive services. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adil Fakhro, hailed the growth of international investment projects in Bahrain. He highlighted the package of facilities and incentives as part of strategies aimed at strengthening Bahrain's investment standing as a gateway to business in the region. The minister made the statements as he paid a visit to the Singaporean company MTQ Oilfield Services in the Bahrain International Investment Park in Salman Industrial Town, where he met with the chairman of the board of directors of the MTQ Group, Kwa Kukim. He was updated about the company's workflow and future plans, as well as the range of advanced services it provides in the field of oil and gas safety equipment. The Singaporean MTQ Group is one of the most important international companies operating in the Kingdom of Bahrain in Salman Industrial Town. Inaugurated in August 2009, the company operates in the field of repairing, providing services and modernizing security and safety equipment in oil fields and in both offshore and onshore platforms. The Youth Affairs Minister Rawan bint Najib Tawfiqi attended a ceremony concluding Bahrain's participation in the 34th edition of the Ship for World Youth in the presence of the Japanese ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Delegations from the Kingdom of Bahrain have been participating in the Ship for World Youth strip since 1998. Addressing the ceremony, the minister hailed participants in the Ship for World Youth over the past editions, thanking them for representing the kingdom and showcasing its culture and long-standing values. The ambassador of Japan praised Bahrain's participation in the Ship for World Youth and said, its importance in building bridges of communication. The Ministry of Health Undersecretary Dr. Walid Khalif Al Mana has affirmed the Ministry's keenness to harness all its capabilities in order to provide the best health and treatment services to the pilgrims of the Kingdom of Bahrain, including citizens and residents, ahead of their departures to the holy sites. Dr. Al Mana was speaking during his participation in a workshop for administrators, paramedics, and chiefs of the official Hajj campaigns for this year's under the theme We Care About Your Health you complete your pilgrimage, organized by the Ministry of Health. He said that the services include preventative vaccinations and awareness programs before the Hajj season. The workshop included lectures for the medical staff and the campaigns on how to handle cases of hypoglycemia, diabetic foot, high blood pressure and heart attack, how to store medications and insulin needles during Hajj, infectious diseases and vaccinations and their importance in the Hajj season, and how to handle cases of heat exhaustion, sunstroke and joint pain in Hajj, in addition to food safety in Hajj in terms of preservation, preparation and transportation. 
The Chief Executive Officer of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Mohamed Al Ansari, announced the inauguration of the first specialized clinic for severe asthma in the Kingdom of Bahrain at the Senmania Medical Complex. The launch of the specialized clinic for severe asthma coincides with the World Asthma Day, which is celebrated in May every year. Dr. Al Ansari praised the great and continued support that the health sector enjoys from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, based on the Kingdom's belief in sustainable development in which this Distinguished health services are among its priorities. Al Ansari stressed during the inauguration ceremony that the Kingdom of Bahrain attaches importance to the health and safety of all and achieving comprehensive health coverage. He also noted the directives of the Supreme Council of Health and the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals in implementing pioneering initiatives that serve patients with the highest levels of quality and excellence. The general director of Vettel Hotel and Tourism Business School in Bahrain, Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, affirmed that the high ranking of the French Vettel College for the second year in a row reflects the college's international reputation and successful programs. The French Vettel College maintained its high ranking among 160 universities in the world in the QS World University rankings in hospitality and leisure management for the year 2023. The French college ranked 11th for the second year in a row, an achievement which reflects positively on Vatel Bahrain and affirms the college's international reputation. It also reinstates the college graduates' competence as well as the quality of its alumni, whose number exceed 42,000 globally. The college graduates hold positions in the tourism, hospitality and hotel industry internationally, especially given the global expansion of the college, which currently has 55 branches in 33 countries, in addition to its modern academic material in line with the international standards and the requirements of the global labor market. The French Vatel Hospitality Group was founded in 1981 and is the first group of academic business administration colleges specialized in the field of hotel and hospitality. As part of the second phase of the National Afforestation Campaign for Evergreen, the National Initiative for Agriculture Development in cooperation with the Ministry of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture and the Supreme Council for the Environment planted trees in Zalag Health Center in the Southern Governorate, supported by Yusuf bin Ahmed Kano Group. During the event, the objectives of the campaign and its latest development since its official announcement were reviewed, as the Kingdom of Bahrain continues to be committed to preserving the environment and improving the environmental reality in light of the Kingdom's goals to reach zero neutrality by 2060. The second phase of the national campaign builds on the achievements accomplished in the first phase, launched in October of 2021, and reinstates the success of the ongoing partnerships between the public and private sectors in implementing national projects. The permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York, Ambassador Jamal Faris al rawai participated in the Security Council's meetings on the country's responsibilities and response to cyber attacks on sensitive infrastructures, which was called by for the U.S., and Albania. Arwa'i delivered an address in which he stressed Bahrain's belief in the significance of ensuring a safe and peaceful cyberspace and preventing conflicts arising from malicious cyber activities. He pointed out the need to set international rules and standards for cyberspace based on the principles of international law, including the Charter of the United Nations and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Asumi, affirmed the importance of activating the tools of parliamentary diplomacy and advancing strategic plans aimed at accelerating digitization in the Arab countries. This came during his visit to the Kingdom of Morocco to participate in the second meeting of the high-level parliamentary working group on technology, innovation and digital transformation to learn about the Moroccan experience in the field of digital transformation. Al Asumi expressed pride in the efforts exerted by the various entities in the Arab countries, which aim at keeping pace with global technological development by adopting the latest solutions that support the strategic goals of the service and executive entities of the countries. He emphasized the importance of reinforcing the infrastructure and adopting modern legislative frameworks capable of keeping pace with global updates and developments. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Asumi, also met with the head of the Moroccan Council of Advisors, Naim Miara, in the presence of members of the high-level parliamentary working group on technology, innovation and digital transformation. Al Asumi hailed the pioneering experience of Morocco in the field of technology, science and digital transformation. For his part, Miara praised the initiatives of the Arab Parliament, including the establishment of the parliamentary working group on science and technology, which is one of the most important initiatives launched by Parliament.
During his meeting with the Speaker of the Moroccan Parliament, Rashid Talbi Alami, the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel bin Abdurrahman al Asumi, stressed the importance of activating the parliamentary diplomacy and advancing strategic plans towards digitization in Arab countries. Al Asumi praised the achievements of the Kingdom of Morocco in the field of digitization, stressing that Morocco's hosting of the second meeting of the high level parliamentary group on technology, innovation, and digital transformation is an opportunity to get acquainted closely with the features of the Moroccan experience and to exchange successful Arab experiences in the field of technology and innovation. For his part, the Speaker of the Moroccan Parliament praised the role of the Arab Parliament and its stances, praising the initiatives and programs of the Arab Parliament in order to consolidate cooperation and integration between parliaments in Arab countries. During these days, MENA is witnessing a competition between the government and private sectors, Hajj companies and Tawaf companies in the process of preparing the camps for the pilgrims in preparation for receiving them on the day of Tarwiyah and the days of Tashriq. All concerned parties related to Hajj are exerting all their energy and capabilities to provide means of comfort, security and reassurance to the pilgrims so that they can perform their rituals with ease and reverence. During the next few days, the camps will be equipped with matrices and beds as well as a restaurant. MENA is located within the boundaries of the sanctuary between Mecca and Muzdalifah, seven kilometers northeast of the Grand Mosque. In MENA, the pilgrims spend the nights of the 9th, 11th and 12th of the Hijjah for those who rush and the 13th nights for those who donate. After more than 40 years, the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair continues to inspire the annual literary and publishing industry gathering, which runs until Sunday at Abu Dhabi National Exhibition Center, is back with another formidable lineup of speakers and events. Launched in 1981 as the Islamic Book Fair at the Abu Dhabi Cultural Foundation, the event was part of UAE founding father, the late His Highness Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Hayyan's vision of developing the country's cultural sector. The first book fair was attended by 50 publishers from Egypt and Lebanon, in addition to a number of local libraries. This year's festival in contrast features more than 1,130 international publishers and expected to attract more than 150,000 visitors. After rebranding itself as the first book fair in Abu Dhabi, the event expanded to include more publishers and cultural institutions and returned in 1986 and 1988 before running on an annual basis in 93. The International Monetary Fund slightly raised its forecast for 2023 U.S. economic growth on Friday while noting that a slowing economy will likely lead to a small increase in unemployment in 2024. IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva sounded a warning about the ongoing stalemate in the U.S. over rising borrowing limits before a June 1st deadline and called for Republicans and Democrats in Congress to come to a speedy resolution. Real GDP growth in the U.S. is expected to rise by 1.7 percent this year, up from 1.6 percent forecast earlier this year. before. Slowing to 1.0% in 2024, according to the IMF.